I would like to make practically all of the meeting tonight somewhat similar to how we proceeded last time with questions and answers and an open discussion, which I guarantee you will become much more livelier than it is right now. Because we're going to probe very deeply tonight and you're going to have some emotional reactions to what you hear. Some of you may speak up on uh, where you have been maybe operated on, and that is fine. If you have any, any reactions at all, even, listen, now listen to this. If you have even any negative reactions to what you hear tonight, feel quite free to express them. If you are disturbed by anything, then yes, have the courage to say so in front of the crowd because don't you know that the man and the woman sitting right next to you feels the very same way. Only maybe he's a little shyer than you are and you will help him out if you will simply say what's on your mind even if you disagree with what you hear. So after a few opening remarks we're going to open it up to questions and answers but we're going to have to have something to discuss are we not? When the other gentleman stood up here, he uh, mentioned the need to be relaxed, and that is just fine. May I add something else to that? I'm sure you've all had very busy days, a busy day in the office or at home, and you may be quite unaware of how you have brought your business day here, or your home day here. Would you please do something right now at the very start would you cut off all of today and give your entire attention right here, right now, be here. You may think this is quite simple. You're looking at me now and you may think that you're giving me your full attention. You may not be so at all because the mind works so fast and so many things that I say may strike an association. I may say, I may say husband and that might strike something in the wife's mind or vice versa. See, you're smiling. Something may be said that would distract your mind from what we want to get into tonight. And it's, it's so important to you. It's very important to you that you give your full attention to it. Do you understand that you'd not be wandering and be unconscious of being uh, in Los Angeles or Long Beach or somewhere else, but be right here at this meeting tonight? Also, everything we're going to talk about I'll get to the subject in a minute, but these preliminaries are necessary. Also, everything you hear tonight will be good news. There's nothing but good news. So when you hear something that might cut a little sharply, I want you to remember that. Because where, where there is pain, mental pain, emotional pain, it means that there is a contradiction in you. Because if there is no contradiction, you would not feel pain at the truth. See, all of us, we're hiding so many things down here, and when the truth stabs in a touchy spot, we wince. Do we not? Not just in a meeting like this. May I ask you a question to answer to yourself, not to me? How many times today, just, just today since you got up this morning, have you been negative in one way or another? Maybe a letter came that uh, wasn't the good news you wanted. Maybe someone honked his horn rudely at you? What was your reaction? See, we're here to clean out the mess, to start to clean out all our negative attitudes, feelings, emotions, so that when you go out of here tonight, when I go out of here, when I get on that freeway, and when you go to work tomorrow morning, you won't be an unconscious slave to that exterior world out there, which, if I may say so, may I speak frankly? If I may say so, you are a slave to it. The vast majority of you are, are a slave, but you don't see it because you've never investigated. So we're going to investigate. We're going to find out why humanity, why the world is in the mess that it's in. Would you agree to that much to begin with? You've been watching television, haven't you? Now it's very important from this point on that you do give the attention that I ask you to give. Because if you miss 
even one step, then the rest will be hazy to you. You're going to discover why, since the day of our birth, we got into this great problem that we have today at the age of, what, 25, 45, 55, 65? Why we are so afraid of so many things, why we are so tense, why we are so nervous. You're going to find out why you are afraid. Some of you are afraid of being laid off, aren't you? You're afraid of financial uh, pinches. You're afraid, you're afraid your wife will leave you, your husband will leave you. We're going to find out why we are afraid, and we're also going to find out, most important of all, how to not be afraid of anything anymore. Now, it's very important that you do not deceive yourself by saying that you are not afraid, because you are, right? You are. You know it. You know, you, you know your relatives, don't you? You know how afraid they are. You know how angry they are. We're going to find out right now. There is a part of your mind, of our minds, which is called memory. From the day of your birth to this moment right here now, you have been accumulating thousands of experiences with other people, with the world in general. And you have had emotional reactions from, remember when you were, look, look, listen. Remember when you were in grammar school? Remember the teacher who uh, frightened you? and who conditioned you into being afraid of other people? Remember when you grew up in your home with your parents who were far from being saints? You remember how frightened you were? This is why you're frightened today, because these memories of the past have accumulated themselves into a bundle, which bundle you now call me, I, the self. I want to repeat that, and you should remember this. If you want out, if you want out, then you, you listen to this. All these experiences that you have had since you were born clustered around what you call Mary Jones and John Smith. Mary Jones was frightened in the sixth grade because she almost flunked and would have been the only one who didn't go on to the next grade, and it terrified her. Therefore, Mary Jones feels herself walking along the edge of a cliff. And every experience after that has hardened this idea that you're walking along an edge of the cliff. I want to tell you right now, if you are, you have wasted many years of your life, and you should start right tonight to stop it. I hope you're here tonight very seriously. I hope you are fed up to your neck with being afraid because you can start to break out starting right tonight. All these experiences that you have had formed I, John Smith. Now listen, all that you have ever called yourself and labeled yourself is a complete falsehood. It is a hoax. You don't know it, and I don't know it, didn't know it, that all these labels that you must be married, Mary Smith, when you're 18, or at least by 25, because that's what most women do. Or, John Jones, you must be a success in the business world. What a horror. And so if you don't get married, or if you don't become successful, then you think you have failed. We're so sensitive to what other people think of us that we don't, we don't give any thought at all to this original error that we have fallen into that you must be successful. Listen, have you ever asked yourself, what if you were not successful in any way at all as society has defined success? Suppose you didn't get married and have a nice so-called respectable family. What if you didn't make the success of your business? What if you were just a, a nobody with no success at all, but just earned enough money to put bread on the table and a roof over your head. And that is all you ever did out there, but you were a real human being who didn't go around telling lies every five minutes because you thought it was necessary to tell lies, 
to put on an act to live up to this phony self-image that because you and I were so gullible and we thought those gray-haired, necktied gentlemen knew what they were talking about when they told us about success, what it meant, that we couldn't see through the hoax. Tonight, the whole hoax is going to be exposed. Now, I'll tell you what will happen to you if you do this. I'm going to say it. I had some hesitation in my mind, but I'm going to say it. You will be a, a completely sane human being. I hesitated to say that because some of you may have reacted and said, well, I already am sane. I will ask you a question. I'm speaking generally and individually. Do you think, do you think to be in a fit of anger is sanity? Do you think to hate anyone is sanity? Huh. See, it's a good thing I'm not talking individually to you or you would walk out of here. When I talk to you as a group, you let it slide off onto someone else. You take this very personally because then you will grow to be a mentally healthy human being and I'll tell you what that means. That means you will be free, entirely free, I said totally free, of the mess by which humanity lives and destroys each other. Then you will no longer contribute to the madness around you and you will know the difference between having a real conscience and an assumed conscience. You will lose most of your friends. Are you following so far? You know, it takes an awful lot of courage to double up your fist in the right way, not the wrong way, to double up your fist and put it down on the table and say, I am not going along with my madness anymore. But before doing that, you have to see how mad you really are. And before doing that, you have to have at least an ounce of courage, otherwise you won't look. You won't see the kind of a life you have been living up till now. How would you like to change everything so that from now on, everything you think and do and say will be in favor of yourself and instead of in favor of the madness around you. That's what we're getting at tonight. Don't run away from this. Not if you want out. It's up to you. If you want out, this is the place to get it. You're very fortunate in being here tonight because you're not being lied to tonight. You're being told the truth tonight. You'll not hear a word of deception. You're not being flattered. This is, this is mental health night tonight. When you begin to see that a thought about yourself is not yourself at all, you will have the strength to drop it right now. I, I can't tell you, I really can't tell you what will happen to you, but I know that you will be a totally free human being who doesn't give two hoots what the world does because you are your own free world and they have no association with you at all except on the social level. You're not asked to give up your friends, you're not asked to give up anything because when you understand the truth, they will fall away of themselves because if you give it up, that will be vanity and you'll say, I'm going to a cave in the mountain and be a Zen Buddhist monk and you'll be proud and you'll have vanity and you'll hate everybody when you come down again. Remember the story about the man who went out in the mountains and he come, came very saintly and thought he had uh, found freedom and he came back in the marketplace and someone bumped him with his elbow and he turned angrily on him. You can get to the point where you're not angry about anything at all. Now, what was your reaction to that? Shall I tell you? I will tell you. Most of you here tonight wouldn't know what to do without your angers. You would feel lost without them, wouldn't you? You wouldn't know what to do without your complaints. If you had no one to complain against, no other social group, no other individual, what would you do with yourself? You, you wouldn't know what to do. Why don't you find out by having the courage to not have any enemies 
in this whole world. It will scare the life out of you at first. Because up until now, you have been getting, follow this please, you have been getting a sense of who you are by creating an opposite to you. Where there is no Mr. B, there can't be a Mr. A, right? If you give up having an enemy, then who are you? You are not someone with an enemy anymore, therefore you are no one. But when you are no one, then you are everything. Because you don't have a labeled self with all its prides and vanities that must compete with the world. There's no competition whatever anymore. Are you following me? We'll get to the questions in a minute. When you and I have the courage not to live by self-labels anymore, I am a successful businessman, which does not mean you can't be a successful businessman. I'm talking about the identification, the label with it. When you can drop all labels about who you are and be no one, you will be quite astonished at how your whole life will be different, how you won't have bad dreams anymore, how you won't be nervous anymore, how you won't be afraid of newspaper headlines. I think we will open it up with that and see what you have to say. If you have questions about what has been said so far, do ask them and speak in a loud voice, please, so that the others can hear you. And we'll develop it from questions and open discussion from this point on. The lady said that what, uh, if I have it correctly, that uh, what was said tonight remind you of something else you had read somewhere. The youth today, did you say? Well, all right, but let's not speak generally. The youth today cannot uh, go out and and criticize society without first having seen that the youth itself is a part of a society which they are condemning. All right, young, young people, old people. What I'm saying is, then we'll go on. Why do you belong to any group at all? I'm not talking about this group here. <laughs> I thought I'd better say that. Yes, sir. Pardon? I'm sorry, sorry. All right, if you come together as a group to, to learn from each other, that is wonderful, that is great. If you have a group of people who really want out, nothing is better. True. What, the motive is, why do you come together with other people? Look, look into yourself and find out why. Maybe you came to the meeting tonight because you were lonely or something. That would be a wrong motive. If you came because you, you thought, well now, I am lonely when I stay home alone, and I'd like to get out of this condition of being lonely on the all the time because it's so painful. That is a right motive because I will tell you that you can be completely free of being lonely or of any other negative condition. This is what we're talking about tonight. If you're free of, of one thoroughly, you will see that it works on the others because all these are connected. Yes? yes uh, Loudly, please. Would someone repeat that, please? Would someone repeat that? Speak quite loudly, please. I'll say it again, all right? <laughs> you're talking about a type of uh, hypnotism to make yourself think that you're not negative. No, sir, I am not. Then what are you saying? Are you happy yourself? May, may I ask you a question, sir? Yeah, sure. well, will you not be offended? Yeah, that's cool, man. All right. All right. <laughs> I'm going to answer your question. May I ask you in what spirit you ask that question? In what spirit? I'm asking it in a negative spirit because I don't like the spirit that you came out with because you haven't said anything to me Have you been frightened by what you've heard tonight? No, because I've heard it before too many times. I, I must tell you all, we might as well clear this up once and for all, not just to this gentleman, but to all of you. 
any question or comment made in a negative spirit, there, there's no answer to it at all. Do you understand? If you want to know the truth, and even if it bothers you, if you ask and are willing to take something that might bother you even more, then you may ask it. But a question asked because you have been frightened, made frightened by something you heard, there can be no answer to that. There can only be an answer to a sincere question. Now I'll, I'll answer. No, no, no. Wait a minute. No, we are not here to induce hypnotism, but to abolish hypnotism. When you are in any negative state at all, I said any negative state, resentment, fear, anxiety. Some of you have been very anxious tonight by what you have heard. I know you have. I'm not criticizing you. I'm saying, I'm saying look at it and see that this is your condition because this is your chance to get over this thing that's been killing you all your life. I, do you remember me saying this is all good news tonight? Because I know that this is what happens when you give to something like this. It's all good news. Rather, yes, just a minute, please. I'll get to you. Rather than induce hypnosis, we are here to break out of hypnosis. Don't you know what it means to be hypnotized? It means to be miserable. It means to be unhappy. It means to be hostile. This is a state of psychic hypnosis because you do not understand as yet what I covered earlier, that you're living from a fixed position. And I will tell you, any time you are trying to prove a fixed position, you are miserable and you are afraid. When you have the courage to have no position at all, to drop it, then the truth will enter in that blank space that you have had the courage to give up this fixed idea, whatever it might be. For example, that you're smarter than the speaker. See, you may have that idea. That's all right. You can have any idea you want. Uh, go ahead. We're here to break hypnosis, not to induce it. Would you make that a little clearer, please? Well, otherwise, what I don't understand is I didn't think there could be any law. <sighs> there isn't to a person who has awakened up, who has awakened. Where, where's the opposition? Look, do you know why a person has enemies? I'll explain it to you in detail. This will enter into what you said. One part of the mind works in opposites. You see it throughout nature, you see it in your mind. Opposites, take nature first, shall we? We'll cover it. Uh, mountain, valley, ocean, land, male, female, night, day. Psychologically, the mind also works in opposites. Yes, no, up and down, good, bad, moral, immoral. All right so far? As long as I am living from this one part of the mind that thinks in opposites, I will judge good and bad, but I will judge it from my conditioning. If I belong to religion A, religion B is bad. And the man in religion B judges religion A is bad. All right, so far you follow? I belong to political party A. You belong to B, and so we argue about it. And what an idiotic thing that is. So far? Above your idea and my idea of good and bad, which is hypocritical and nonsense, there is true good because you have finally seen the folly of living from man-made moralities. We sign peace treaties and slaughter each other the next day, which is hypocritical morality. I finally see through my error of trying to be a label of good as opposed to me labeling you as bad. You belong to the opposite religion, the opposite political party, or maybe uh, some other reason. Maybe I just like you because you're rich and I'm poor. It makes no difference. When I finally see that there is a, another way to think, a third way of thinking, which is above the opposites of good and bad, I'm out of the whole hypocritical mess of me being the good guy and you're the bad guy. Now, have you been watching television lately and watching some fights among countries and uh, individuals? This is because all these people are living by labels of morality instead of from authentic morality. You have the courage to have no side at all and it will terrify you when you start to drop them because you won't know who you are anymore. You have labeled yourself a good person and something comes along to disprove that you're a good person and you get upset, don't you? What if you didn't have a label of being good? I'll, I'll tell you. If you had no labels of being good or bad, you would be a truly good, decent, honest, 
human being with a genuine conscience who's not always hating someone and trying to prove that you're smarter than they are. Have we covered it somewhat? If not, you can try again. Yeah, uh, right and wrong is uh, why we came here or why we would go anywhere or do anything, you know, as far as motive is concerned. Otherwise, uh, right motive doesn't necessarily produce right answer. Did you follow what I said before? Well, you have an ideal image of yourself as being a good person that it creates an enemy, a bad person. If you don't have any idea of being good, how can you create anyone being bad that you have to fight with? Try to see it from that viewpoint. Try to see that there's another way to thinking, which indeed there is, which takes a lot of hard work on yourself, where you don't have a position where you are the good one. And isn't it, isn't it a miracle that you are always the good one and the other one's always the bad one? The lady in purple, please, if I may put, put it that way. Yes, go ahead. Okay. We have our label. Yes. Our self-image. Which I think we get from the people we come in contact with. Okay. Okay. see a show of hands. How many of you here like to be slaves? No. Wait a minute, just a minute. See, I'll answer the later. No, I know, I know, I know. And I, and I, I know what you're getting at. All right, listen. Do you want to live your own life or the, other, the life that people expect you to live? Why do you give two cents? Now, now listen to this and don't go off on the wrong track on it. Why do you give two cents what anyone thinks of you? If you are a truly, I said truly, decent human being, how can they touch you? It's only when you are playing the same game that they are that they can touch you because you're both on the same psychological level. Do you see this? Stop playing the game and you won't get hurt by the game. If you are getting hurt, you are playing the game, period. Yes, sir. Well, I'm glad you're here tonight. Dude. We all have a lot of. I think we're just, we're just we don't have a, uh, we're not establishing a standard of uh, point of relativity uh, on whether what's good or bad or traditional. You're not saying there's no good or bad, only that we have a right to choose the good or bad. There has to be. Uh, is that what you mean? No, miss. <laughs> what you're saying then, uh, that, that what is good is what you feel like doing? No, no, no. If you do what you feel like doing, which is what most of you do, and you don't understand why you end up with such headaches. You do... You do what you feel like doing because you have not learned the difference between true self-interest and false self-interest. You still think there is something that you can get that will complete you, and you never notice that you've been doing this all your life, and you're still as empty as you were before. I'm trying to wake you up to see that you have to jolt yourself off of this path, this mechanical mind path by which we have all been conditioned, every one of us, every one of us, you can think of it, with the way you've got it. We're trying to jolt ourselves off the path, and this is why tonight there has to be a certain amount of emotion in it. If I give you a purely intellectual talk, you will all sit here and nod your heads and say, that was, that's quite true, that gentleman gave a nice talk, he agreed with everything I thought. <laughs> You have to be jolted a little bit, and I've seen evidences of this. And if you will, yeah, those of you who have been upset tonight, you have a great opportunity. And don't look, look, you can't lie, you can't lie here tonight. You can't kid me. Those of you who have been upset have the greatest opportunity than those of you who are so dead you can't get upset. It's a fact. Well, do you want to hear what we've been upset about? Yes. The, pardon? Do you want to hear what we've been upset about during the day? Would you like to tell us? No, you, you may do that. You said for us to forget it. No, I mean... If, <laughs> no, as a discussion, to bring it out so that we can all get into it. But don't use it to brag. You understand? 
No, no. See, people, people like to mention their sorrows because it makes them the center of attention. And I'm saying, if you just want to mention it so as to bring it out so we can examine the thing, that's fine. Please do so. Uh, uh, this gentleman in the, in the uh, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, I understand. I understand. I wanted to know how we started the process. Is that correct? That's very good. Now I'll tell you how. This is very important. See, some of you had a reaction a second ago, didn't you? You were watching things. If you will observe yourself in action every second, right now as you're sitting here, some of you have been looking up here all the time without throwing your attention back on yourself to see how you were feeling about what you were hearing. And it's very important that you begin to understand your own reactions. So that the react listen, so that the reactions become conscious instead of mechanical. Therefore, if you get upset, I'm very glad for you if you're doing it consciously. Because you can say to yourself as a next step, now we'll get into it a little bit more, you can say, for heaven's sake, here I am, 40, 60 years old, and for the first time I saw that there is no problem in this world except my own reaction to the challenges from the outer world. Not that boss who fired me, not that girlfriend who left me, but my own response to it. Thank heaven I woke up in time to start to get off the, this mechanical train track that I've been on. Now more specifically, if you will start to observe every thought that you have, every reaction, especially every negative emotion, and then please, when you see a negative emotion in you, don't be ashamed, because now you've made another mistake. When you say, I am ashamed and I am a guilty sinner, then you, you're doing the same thing they do in, in some churches where they bring you down in front so that you become the center of attention and you become a greater egotist than you were before and you're sicker than you were before. We're here to break the pattern. When you see anything negative in yourself, look at it and let it pass away without putting an eye to it, without saying, I am an angry person. Because in essence, these negative feelings, these shamed feelings you have no matter what you did, are not essentially you. They are mechanical forces which have taken you over and which you have said I to. And when you say I to them, you cannot possibly break them. This is a very involved process. Do you understand? And we can only give the surface of this. It takes long, hard work to look at yourself and see that I am, or you are, your own enemy. And that you have identified wrongly with this feeling. And that you can die to it. When you die to the fact to the I, then you die to the painful feeling that you get. Then you're a sane human being. Yes, sir. Uh, if, if that's your theory, that's what you go upon. I mean, that's what you base your life on. Then where do you set your goal that to be uh, successful? Or do you uh, just go about being a, a wandering Christian person? No, the worst thing you can do is go about wandering being a spiritual person because you're deluding yourself. You have to look. Whatever your position is right now, whether you're a businessman or a housewife, this is the perfect place to start this drastic self-transformation that we're talking about. Don't do anything but stay right where you are, because your very need to escape from this will lead you into a similar situation a little bit later, because you haven't changed yourself at all. You will just attract more of the same thing. What you have to do to answer your question is to see yourself as you are, which will give you the greatest shock you've ever had in your life. And if you can ever find anyone else who wants to go along with you, hang on to them. Would you like a definition of love? Maybe is that what you're asking? I'm asking, are you intellectualizing love or do you not believe it? No, intellectual love is not love at all. I'll tell you what intellectual love is. No, I'm not asking you intellectualizing love. No, no, we're not. We're getting rid of intellectual ideas about love so that you will really love and not say the word love 
and think that because you have said, said the word love that you are truly a loving person. I will tell you, I'll tell, I will anyway, if I may. I will tell you when you will really love, when you have really died to this false sense of self that we've been talking about, when you no longer exist as a conditioned labeled person who has created an opposite person. Then there is true love because you're not going to unconsciously get something from the other person calling it love while it is really dependency, while it is really jealousy, while it is really fear, while it is really many other negative emotions. You cannot talk about love. Mm. Yes. Will you speak quite loud, please? Thank you. Okay. I'm, tra I'm talking about dropping out of the stupid game, not dropping out of life. Don't you know that you can be right? Are we sitting here together now talking with each other? Are we dropping out of life? I'm talking about dropping out of the deceptive game which most human beings play on each other in the name of love or in the name of friendship or in the name of international cooperation. No, sir, don't you dare change from where you are. You're just, you're just deceiving yourself into thinking that you're spiritual if you drop out of society. Why don't you overcome society by not being a part of it anymore psychologically, which you will understand fully when you have done it and not before? You're assuming that I've done it? decide that do you not what's the problem you decide for yourself let me ask you a question in connection with that I, I understand your question let me ask you a question answer this very honestly to yourselves now you answer it not only just now but when you go home may I ask you what is it like living with you how do you find it living with yourself <laughs> now we had a nice honest answer you know it's horrible, don't you? Don't you, listen, don't you kid tonight. I hope you came here to get something of value. You're getting it, but you have to accept it and not, not resist it because it goes against all the stupid nonsense that has been given to you in the name of God and Christ and reality. Why don't you find out for yourself who God is, what reality is? Why are you so gullible as to take everyone's word for everything? Pardon? What if you don't take everybody's words for everything? And you get so long and say, that's how you feel? And then you take it inside of yourself and you kind of whirl it around you and then you find out how you feel about it. And you're happy with the way you feel about it. But you leave them alone because that's the way they feel about it. What if you do? Oh, oh, oh. Well, I'll have to ask you a second question then. Connect with this. Are you really happy? If it's contentment with you, yeah. With yourself. Okay. What, no problem. No problem. I'm not talking to those of you who are out of it. I'm only speaking to those of you who are in the trap. How do you know if you're in the trap? <laughs> Come on now. Now, I won't speak to you because I don't want this to be personal to all of you. Who are you trying to kid? Look, you don't kid yourself with those nightmares you had last night, right? Don't kid me. Earlier in the talk, I brought out well, a couple times. I brought out the idea of anger because I know that all of you, to one degree or another, have a lot of anger in you. And, and if you want to get rid of this burning anger, then this little slight hint that maybe you have anger in you, and you took it with honesty, you could begin to work with it so that you would not be angry anymore. You also recall me saying that anger is very valuable to people, falsely valuable, 
It's poison, really. But it's valuable because it gives you a sense of who you are. And if you give up your anger, it would be too terrifying because you can no longer say, well, at least I'm an angry person. At least I'm someone who stands up for my rights. It takes a lot of courage to drop all your so-called stupid rights and be a real human being. And just stop, stop torturing yourself all day long. It takes a lot of hard work to get back to the original question down here, this lady here. It takes a lot of hard work. It's up to you. It's up to you, not up to me. It's your life. What are you going to do with it? Do whatever you want with it. I have, I have no control of your life. I'm asking you, if you want to change it, if you are willing to go into this and do some hard work, good. Then listen to this and let's talk about it. Because this is the way out. And I don't care how many books you read, how many lectures you hear, anywhere, there is no other way out but the one way out. Which is, this gentleman in the tan shirt, to observe yourself, to see yourself as you are, instead of as you imagine you are. Now I'll tell you how you can tell whether you're living from an imaginary picture of yourself instead of from reality. It's very simple. If you suffer any way at all, jealousy, fear of death, ha. Huh. Now you laugh that one off. Now you tell me you're not afraid of death. Are you? Who, who said that, please? If I tell you that I'm not, would you believe me? Yes. All right. If I tell you that I am, you would have another negative reaction. You have to judge me. I, I don't judge myself at all. I know where I stand. But I can't tell you about me because you would have wrong reactions to it, if I may I say so. Pardon? I wouldn't. All right. Then you wouldn't. All right. Why, 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 do, you, why do you think that every individual on the earth has a fear of death? I personally don't. I personally don't feel... Do you fear anything at all, may I ask? Anything, anything, anything. Like no, not not things. I mean, do you fear other people, maybe? Um, no. I feel no one can touch me unless I fear being touched. Then, then you don't have too many problems. Are you speaking on an, are, are you speaking to negative-minded people? Are you supposed to get negative people? Are you supposed to get positive? Is it based for one certain type of individual? No, I understand. The, this talk tonight, this discussion tonight, is for one type of person. And you, you're, you're the boss. It's up to you. This is for people who are tired of living the way they have lived up until tonight. If you're tired, I don't mean a little bit tired, you have to be thoroughly tired, so tired that you don't know which way to turn. If you still have a way to turn, then you will turn in that direction and you will never find the truth because you have sought comfort instead of the truth. When you have dropped all search for comfort in place of, in, instead of, search for truth, then you will find yourself passing through a period of great conscious doubt, great conscious despair. You'll be going through the dark jungle that I'm sure many of you have read about and probably some of the books you've read. And unless you enter this jungle so that you no longer know who you are and so that you see that you are as frightened as you really are, unless you pass through this, you'll never come out on the other side where you're not afraid anymore. I'm giving you suggestions tonight, ways tonight to enter into this knowing that even the fear itself of this dark place is false. That you have to pass through it and see it for yourself. So that you don't know who you are. Yes? Mr. Howard, you have in your literature somewhere a story about a man in a boat going toward a waterfall. Uh, when I began reading the book, that uh, gave me a great realization of what you were teaching. Yes. Shall I repeat it? I'll repeat it for you. The lady is referring to an illustration in a book, if I have the right illustration where a man is asleep in a canoe and the canoe is going downstream toward a waterfall. Sleep in a canoe, down a river, toward a waterfall. This man has no problems at all. He's asleep, he's dreaming about his new girlfriend, about his success tomorrow in the stock market. He has no problems, not much. Except that he is heading for the waterfall. In fact, he's heading for a new waterfall every day, a new shock every day. Now, suppose someone on the bank sees this man asleep in the canoe and starts throwing rocks at the canoe and maybe a couple of the rocks hit him and wake him up and this man wakes up and sees where he's heading is he going to be angry at the man who threw the rocks at him? He probably will at first until he sees where he's going. Then when he sees 
he will follow that man around the world to hear to get more rocks thrown at him to help him wake up more human beings do not know that they dwell in a state of psychic sleep in spite of all the evidence in their daily fears and angers and tensions it is so plain for heaven's sake you see the cop in back of you and you have a, a, your heart leaps you get a letter from the lawyer's name up in the left hand corner and your heart leaps you read in the paper that the aircraft factory is closing and you work there and your heart leaps when you have gone through all these things we're talking about there can be no fear because you no longer have a self that creates an opposite that creates the fear where there is one thing there can be no fear of anything therefore no anger because fear and anger always go together always you look at it yourself I, you have to go out and work with this if you want it you see that when you're afraid you're also angry you may not show it but you are because you are resisting when you come to the point where you don't resist anything now please I people always say the same thing they say you mean we should let people walk over you again when you are free there's no such thing as another person doing a single thing to you because there is no you there anymore which can be hurt this is what is known all right you want to quote the new testament this is what is known as being born again this is what is known when christ said i and my father are one christ had no opposite as far as the other people was concerned they were enemies of him but he had no enemies because he did not need to hate anyone in order to feel I because he was not self-divided he was one with himself and therefore one with everyone else yes I'm sorry I can't hear it all I'm sorry yes very good if you uh, would read the New Testament in light of what we said you would see it in an entirely new way in other words you die to your old nature you remember that you die to the old nature the old condition negative nature which then you were born again but don't you dare ever think that you're born again because the church says you are because that's self-deception and I don't know anyone more self-righteously cruel than so-called Christians or any other labeled church for that matter uh, this gentleman way back now. Yeah, go ahead. Sir? Uh, sir, the lady, the lady is taking over here for a minute. It's all right. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Sir, please, for now. Miss, miss, please, that's enough, thank you. This lady back here. This, uh, would you speak loud and clear, please? Would someone up front repeat that? <coughs> Who heard? You were trying to say uh, that constructive stock is good, but no stock is better. All right, very good. Where there is a negative thought, a so-called positive thought, oh, will you please throw out all your nonsensical books? Not the Mac. <laughs> books on positive thinking will only lead you deeper into the trap. You find out what it means to be really positive, which means sir to be above the opposite thoughts of good and bad I am a good person and therefore you must be bad because it has to have an opposite to be truly positive means yes to be above the opposite thoughts of good and bad because then there which again takes a lot of courage because then you don't exist anymore as you used to as a so-called positive person when you have died to all false ideas about being positive then you'll be really positive 
And you won't have to prove it. There's nothing to prove. How would you like to go out of here never having to prove another thing to anyone about how attractive you are, how intelligent you are, how brilliant you are, how successful you are? Wouldn't that be a relief? Then you just go to work, get your paycheck every week, buy bread and tea, whatever you like to eat, and you'd be out of the mess. And you wouldn't contribute to the mess anymore. Yes? Assuming that this is possible for us to accomplish, is this something that can happen overnight or is it something that has to happen by degrees? Yeah, you have to work real hard because you're not going to get rid of 50 years of neurosis overnight. Mr. Wright. Can I present a challenge? Present a challenge. Yeah. You have a book, and in the book you said, if anyone will read this book five times, he will learn something about it. I have only been through your book three times, and I feel that it's worth the other two. Maybe somebody else thinks the same way. <laughs> Fine. I've read that book three times, and I can't remember anything I read. I read it again. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will tell you how to read intelligent, then this lady here. Just one second, please. When you read a book, read it as if you have no ideas at all, if you don't, as if you don't know anything at all. If you already know the answers, for heaven's sake, why do you read it to begin with? Come to it with a really empty mind, really empty, and let the truth talk to you, not, not the author of the book. You know, I'll, I'll tell you something real, real good news, especially good news. This man just asked a question. This lady here, this lady, this lady, this man over here. The truth is within you. The kingdom of heaven really, really is in you. But it's all covered up with all this conditioning, all this, this junk from the cellar that we've put on top of it. This is what we're trying to do tonight, which is a painful process, to get rid of the junk. Then read the book with an open mind, and you know who will talk to you, not me. You'll be talking to yourself, but not in the old way anymore. Uh, who was it back here? Yes, Lady Mary. I'm sorry, Lady Mary. Um, the first time I'm trying to uh, please or very clearly myself, or not so much my husband, but the image I think I'm going to have, but you're not going to have it. You're trying to please an idea you have about yourself. Do I have that right? That is very uh, painful, isn't it? Huh? Wouldn't you like to be free of it? This is what we're talking about tonight. So that you don't have to please anyone. Now, oh, Lord, I know how you say, I know how your minds work. You're saying that man has no warmth, he has no love. Why don't you find out what love is before you talk about it? When you are not trying to please yourself because you see that there is no one there who needs to be pleased because you're no longer self-divided, you don't have a thing to do except to live sanely. Then you go about your daily business. Maybe you sell watermelons for a living. Go out and sell watermelons, but be a sane man who sells watermelons. Why do you think all this is going to change outward, outward things? It will change certain things. Others it will not. It all depends, which is very detailed. Then I'll ask you a question. A answer it to yourself. Are you tense over pleasing other people so that they'll be pleased with you? I don't see why you want to live this way anymore. You please this man, this woman, so that he or she won't leave you, so that you won't be lonely, so you will still have your sex partner, so you can still have your respectable home. You know, we're going to end in a minute. You have to go a long, long way. It takes a lot of courage and a lot of right seriousness. Don't, don't be flippant about this. This is not a laughing matter. Your life is not a laughing matter. It's very serious, but it is not grim. And this is the best news you could ever hear. We'll take a couple more. This gentleman here. You said we will be ending in a minute or two. Are we be joining us for tea upstairs? Say that again. Will you be joining us for tea upstairs? Yes. Thank you. One more and we'll stop for tea. Yes. If you can get your ego and your true self sufficiently sorted out, uh, then don't you then have difficulty with motivation existence in our society and culture now, like you mentioned selling watermelon, yeah. okay. and you imply that you can sort this out and figure out your true self right. and still go sell watermelon. Yeah, right. Now it would seem right. to me that once you have done that, then you wouldn't want to go sell watermelon. It, so it all depends. What I'm saying is, you are, once you get this, once you have done this, you've come through out on the other side, 
then there is no problem whether you sell uh, uh, watermelons or work in an office. It makes no difference. You're not a part of it anymore. You're not jealous of the girl next, the next desk because she's 10 years younger and earns more money than you, for example. But you had better be very honest to see that you have this jealousy in you instead of saying that, oh, I'm free, I, have, I don't envy anyone. If you will start with a principle of dreadful, dreadful self-honesty, you will be on the way out. You cannot lie to yourself and get out. You cannot deceive yourself anymore. You'll be honest to the point of pain, and you will come to the point where there is no pain anymore. That's enough for tonight. Thank you very much, Mr. Howard. I'm sure that we'll all do some thinking, some questioning of our own self, our thoughts, our bodies, and what we think we are. Copyright 1973. No portion of this material may be reproduced or sold without permission from Bruno Associates, Garden Grove, California.